Amen and amen. I welcome you to this encounter with destiny service. Just like the world is, somebody will encounter with his glorious destiny by this service in the name of Jesus. Our prophetic theme for the month is what wisdom is this? And we have been running from four service. The teaching topic for this month of March Engaging biblical wisdom for all round breakthroughs. Engaging biblical wisdom for all round breakthroughs. What wisdom is this? As a child of God, you have a glorious destiny. It's a ex destiny of exploit. Not mediocre. You are not called to be a mediocre. No. You are not called into an average life. You and I are called into a life of exploit. Exploit simply means record breaking results. Record breaking results. A life of exploit. Not a mediocre life. Not that you are just pushing. How is everything? So, so. That's not you. How is everything? Well, we are partying. Partying what? Are you a organizer? How is everything? We are, we, we, we are partying. We are hustling. Stop that language. That's not for you. We are called into a life of exploit. Can I hear you say I'm called into a life of exploit? Your neighbor can't hear you. And it looks as if your neighbor's voice is louder than you. Exploit. And one principal virtue, spiritual virtue, that commands exploit is wisdom. In Matthew chapter 13 and verse 54, when they heard Jesus spoke, and they say, in as much as they, they were astonished, and say, ah, where has this man this kind of wisdom? And this mighty wash. Can you see? It is wisdom that generates mighty works. Your destiny of exploits, of breakthrough, of greatness is not possible without wisdom. Where has this man, this wisdom, and this mighty works? It is not only mighty words, but mighty works. Not just mighty words, but mighty works. The wisdom that comes from above delivers far more, you know, results than the natural results. Mighty works. I prophesy to you that this month you will see mighty works. You will share mighty testimonies. I'm praying for somebody. You will see mighty works. You will share mighty testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Wisdom of God delivers mighty works. Therefore, when wisdom is contacted, no devil can stop you from generating mighty works, enviable works. What is wisdom? Wisdom is knowing the right thing to do from the word of God and doing it. Knowing the right way to go and going there. Knowing the right step to take and taking it. And knowing the right tone to make and making it. That's the wisdom of God. Knowing the right way to go from God's word. Knowing the right step to take and taking it. Knowing the right way to go and going there. Knowing the right tone to turn and turning. Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 to 25. 
Therefore, whoso heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken that person to a wise man which built his house upon a rock. The wind came, the rain came, the flood came, beat it, but it could not fall. Why? Because it has a solid foundation. Every act in life that has the word of God as his foundation can never be stopped by the devil. Praise the name of the Lord. And so, if you talk about wisdom, every step must be founded on God's word. Every step must be founded on God's word. So the subject of wisdom I'm talking about the wisdom of God, divine wisdom, has its foundation in God's word. Has its foundation in God's word. So you can't be talking about divine wisdom without having the word of God as the foundation. If the word of God is the foundation of every step you take, every action you take in life, whatever you do in life, there is no way that you will not end up in exploit. Praise the name of the Lord. If we have not yet gotten the result that is commanded by God, it's because something is missing. There is a missing link. Most people, you hear them say, ah, pastor, we have done everything and yet nothing is happening. No. If you have done everything, you should have gotten the answer. You may have done many things and everything, you may not still have done one right thing that is required. Praise the name of the Lord. You may have done many things, but just one right thing to do. Just one right thing to do. Just one right thing to do. Most people now are computer literate. Sometimes you want to get an information. And then you go around, you open, you plug your computer, you own, you do this, you move from one place to the other and all that. And all that. You've forgotten your password. You go round and round and round and round. It will take you round, navigate you, and still come back to one question. And he said, put your password. And that's the thing you have forgotten. Praise the name of the Lord. Until you get that one thing, it won't go further. That's how it is most times. There is one thing that is lacking. That's why that door has not opened. May God show you this month in the name of Jesus. That thing that will open up your business. That will open up your family. That will open up your destiny. May God show you this month in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout the loudest. Amen. In Mark chapter 10, if you read from verses 17 to 21, it tells us the story of that young, rich ruler. Ran to Jesus, was looking for the key to open up his destiny. And according to his story, he has done everything. But Jesus told him one more thing you lack. That's why your destiny has not opened up. And Jesus gave him the key. Unfortunately, he went back sorrowful and not willing to do that. One thing, one thing. The one thing that is remaining for your testimony to come forth, I decree God will show you this month in the name of Jesus. God's desire is to give us breakthrough in every area of our lives. All around. A call into Christianity is a call to all round breakthrough. A call into Christianity is a call to all round breakthrough, all round rest. In Matthew chapter 11 and verses 28 to 29, come unto me, ye that travel and of heavy lady, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest, rest round about, rest round about. But you must learn the key rest round about. Everyone who follows Christ follows him into rest. You are not expected to suffer any good thing in any area of life. Praise the name of the Lord. You are not. In John chapter 10 and verse 10, it says, the thief cometh not but to steal and to destroy. But I have come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly in every area. So you, abundant life covers every area. Covers every area to give you rest roundabout. To make your jaw to be full. To give you breakthrough in every area of life. Everything about your life. 
in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. He said, according as his divine power, he has given unto us all things. How many things? All things that pertains to life and godliness. All things. All things. Through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. All things in all areas. All round rest. Praise the name of the Lord. All round rest. Don't forget, our topic is engaging biblical wisdom for all round breakthrough. Engaging biblical wisdom for all round breakthroughs. All round, all round, all round, all round. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 22, 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 22, whether Paul or Apollos or Skevers, or word or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. All. Look at verse 21. Verse 21 of 1 Corinthians 3, verse 21, just one chapter, one verse before. Let no man glory in yours, in men, for all things are yours. Let no man glory in men, all things, all things, all things that pertains to life and godliness, all things are yours. So you are expected to manifest glory and beauty in every area of life. You are not expected to lack any good thing in any area of life. And so, all through this month, God will be releasing keys that will guarantee breakthroughs in every area of our lives. Can I hear a louder amen? Can I hear a louder amen? This morning, we are going to be looking at one vital area. The wisdom key in that area, we are going to be looking at biblical wisdom for successful parenting. Biblical wisdom for successful parenting. You see, God is interested in everything about us. That's why we are looking at all round breakthroughs this month. It's going to touch every area of your life. Biblical wisdom to guarantee success in every area of your life. God wants you to have all round breakthroughs. So this first Sunday, we are looking at parenting. Biblical wisdom for successful parenting. Hallelujah. I'd like us to know, God's people, that God is interested in our children. And that's why we have a covenant responsibility to train our children in order to secure their future. Every one of us have a covenant responsibility to train our children in the way of the Lord so as to secure their future. To secure their future. To secure their future. Everyone, whether married or not married, you have children inside your womb. So don't say, ah, me, I don't have children yet. They are, they, they are inside you. Praise the name of the Lord. And you must convince God that you are equal to the task before they come. God has given us a covenant responsibility to train our children in order to secure their destiny. In Genesis chapter 14 and verse 14, Abraham took that responsibility. 318 servants who have turned to children. Anyone God puts under you, they are your children. 318 of them, he trained them so well that it was these same people that he trained that delivered his brother's properties and wives and all from the hands of the enemy. Praise the name of the Lord. The children that God has placed under you today, they are already a mark as deliverers to their generation. The Bible says, Saviors shall rise up. Saviors. People who we save, they will be saviors in every sphere of life. So watch what you do to those students today. It is a covenant responsibility that God has given to us to train our children. In Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 7, train off a child the way he should go. 
and he will not depart from it when he grows up. Hallelujah. Train. Train up a child. This instruction is not only for women. Train. All parents must hear. Men must hear. Women must hear. Train. Train up a child. Train up a child the way it should go. That's a covenant responsibility for all parents. A child is a gift from God. And that's why we must carefully and skillfully mold them to become back to us in the hands of God. Psalm 127, verse 3, Lo, children are heritage from God. The fruit of the womb is his reward. They are heritage from God. And it's good for us to know that if God has given us any child, stop possessing them. They are not yours. They belong to God. Some people so much, you know, get attached to their children that they, they forget that they are God's property. They are God's property. And in the process of it, they have spoiled those children. Statistics that have been taken shows that children of most rich people they don't succeed. Not your own. Check the statistics in the world. Why? Because they tend to be pampered. Oh, my child. Oh, my child. My child. My child. My son. My child. My child. My daughter. My child. Sometimes you, you even see that... By the time you see a woman and say, my son, my child, as if you are the only one who gave back to him. The man too will say, my son. Praise the name of the Lord. It's our children. Ultimately, they are God's children. They are only kept in our custody. So if you understand that, you will understand how to train the child that because they come from God, they are God's children, they must be trained according to the scriptures, not according to your culture. Without prejudice to some certain cultural norms that agrees with scriptures that are very good. But anything that is contrary to scriptures is not fit for your children. You see, in our culture, a woman must do everything. And then you see a small boy coming from the village because he's the family of the husband. He will come and eat and put plate. And the wife will go and watch. See, in our culture, the woman is our wife. Our wife? For four-year-old boy, five-year-old, our wife. Praise the name of the Lord. And then the whole family... We, would, we, we wear dress, put it down, eat with plates, and it is, is a wife. Is your wife that will wash it. You will even be shouting on your wife. Hurry up! Lazy woman. You see what they tell you now. See what how many people. Just for seven people, you know fit to wash on time. Do quick. You have to cook by 11 o'clock. You pack the whole village. Praise the name of the Lord. Train up a child in the way of the law. They are God's children. You must train them according to God's prescription, which is God's word. You are only a caretaker. Don't claim ownership. You are accountable. When you put your house in the hands of a caretaker, he accounts for his own soul. So those children God has given out to us, we are accountable to God. So watch how you train them. Watch how you train them. Those children have great destinies. God is looking for a godly seed. That's why he placed them in your hands. For an appointed time where he will use them to accomplish his purpose on the earth. 
In Malachi chapter 3, chapter 2 and verse 15. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 15. God's purpose for giving you those children is because he's looking for a godly seed. And did not he make one? Yet had he the residue of the spirit. And wherefore one? That he might seek a godly seed. Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously against the wife of your youth. He is looking for a godly seed. Godly seed that he can incubate to over a, a time that he will use them to his glory. Hallelujah. So God's purpose for giving you those children is not just to replenish the earth. No, but because he's looking for a godly seed. Many are nonchalant in training up their child. That's the undoing of many. Inside every child that God gives a great destiny, greatness, but how you train them determines their destinies. We all see some pitiable situations today. We have arm robbers on the streets. We have drug addicts. We have prostitutes right there. Those children didn't jump down from heaven. They are children of some parents. They have parents. Where are their parents? What went wrong? Was it not because of the nonchalant attitude? You just carry your child and go and dump it to somebody. He said, because that person has small money. And dump it there. Is it not better to be with your child? Whatever you eat, you eat, you grow together. Something is entering into them. You are teaching them how to have faith in God. How to trust God to meet their needs. Some people just give away and sell out their daughters to somebody just to have rest. Just come and carry her. You have money, so just, just because so that they can be eating. When those children have great destinies, they may not look it today, but there is something inside of them. Praise the name of the Lord. It's time to wake up. It is our God-given responsibility to train them up in the way of the Lord. Abraham was a man in scriptures that was accounted to have trained his children up well in the way of the Lord. Genesis chapter 18 verses 17 to 19. God attested to that fact. I'm not afraid to, to tell Abraham anything. I can trust him. Why is somebody who has, you know, demonstrated responsibility. Everything about him is discipline. Even his family. Hallelujah. I know him. Can God say I know you? I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. He will command them. He will command them. He, he, will, he will make sure that they follow God's instruction. Not to pet them. Abraham did not pet them. He didn't pet them. He didn't say, well, you see, we're in a modern generation. We're in a modern world. So they can just do anything they like. Just do anything they like. No. I know Abraham. He will command his children. He will instruct. He will force them to do the right thing. He will insist that they do the right thing. Praise the name of the Lord. He was in command of his household. Can you be said to be in command of your home? When your children can go out anytime and come in at any time. They are not even afraid. They are not afraid. When we are growing up, there is a time that you must be at home. No matter where you went to. If it is five or ten minutes after that time, you are shaking wherever you are. You, in fact, you start crying before they beat you. You start crying. You can be somewhere and then when you look at the time, you see, you see that I, I'm in trouble today. You lose balance. You start crying. They say, what is the problem? My daddy will beat me today. You will be crying. And then when you get home, to enter is a problem. You will just stay by the door and be crying there until they hear your voice. 
And the women will be the one to be doing the begging. Praise the name of God. The man will just come and say, go back to where you are coming from. Then you change gear again. And cry. You just know because there is high level discipline. But today, what is happening? Parents are so careless. So careless. The child will even go, I won't tell you where he's going. And yet, when he comes back, you, you have cooked for him. Say, so let me warm your food. You, 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 I mean, nothing, no question, nothing. And then you, you ask, because you have left him for so long. The, day, the, the first day you ask, and I say, where are you coming from? What about it, dad? Yeah, what about it? Man, 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 man. Praise the name. I said, no, I just want to know. Yeah, you didn't, you don't need to ask me where I'm going from. I'm ready. Say, okay, you are welcome. I just want to be sure you are okay. I'm, I'm okay, I'm, I'm okay. I can take care of myself. You don't need to bother. I say, okay. I'm going to come in now. Praise the name of the Lord. Our parents don't understand any slangs. When they flog you, you will speak your local slangs. Praise the name of the Lord. He's a man that can command his household. Your child leaves your house and dresses anyhow. Not, no question. Just, you know, just, just dress anyhow. Where is he going? He says he's going to church. You just look at In fact, in this modern day, you won't call him again. Oh, man, this is your dress. is fine, man. To the quarter of the body is outside, though. And the girl will now say, hey, Mom, yeah, thank you, Mom. It looks like that kind of your own dress, too. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Watch what you do because your children are copying everything. They are copying everything. Watch what you do. Watch what you do. Watch what you do. Praise the name of the Lord. Watch what you do. Training is not just in talking. Everything speaks. Your words, your action, your life. Your life. Train up a child the way you should go. Take time to sit with these children. They have spiritual needs. Every time you come to church, you leave your children at home. You leave your children at home. Not one day. You say you are saving money. If you don't, it's better to spend the money now than to spend it in prison tomorrow, God forbid. Than to spend it in rehabilitation center tomorrow, God forbid. No matter what investment you put into your children today, spiritually, it will show tomorrow. It will show tomorrow. Most of us, by the grace of God, are in church today because of the seed our parents put into us yesterday. What are you putting into your children? What is the seed you are sowing into them? You are busy piling all manners of computer game for them. They are feeding their soul with all manners of pollutions from the TV and everything. Not a single word from God. They are not in Sunday school. They won't come for any program, whether teenagers program, youth program. They are not there. You are not bothered. They won't go to Bible school. Junior Bible school, senior Bible no time. You are not bothered. But you can spend time when it is festivity. Let's go for picnic. You buy a new dress for them, everything, because their colleagues too will be there so that they, they can look like a, they will know that from the family they come from. You, heavy money you spend on them to dress well so that they can, uh, your head will now say, yeah, man. You say, who is that? Oh, that that's my son, that's my son. And spiritually, zero. It's time to wake up. Eli, the high priest, he suffered shipwreck. Why? Because he refused to take responsibility for his children. Yeah, his children ended up as sons of Belial. For Samuel chapter 2. And verses 22 to 34. You know the story. 
they end up as children, you know, of Belial. They were sleeping with women that came to church. And when they told the father, instead of the father to take full responsibility, he was very mild. Children, come. What did I hear you are doing? Don't do like that now. It's not good, though. Eh? It's not good, though. <clears throat> he said, I don't want them to be angry. I don't want them to be angry. It's their future you are playing with. And then those children died. The moment they brought the news to him, he broke his neck and died. And the kingdom was taken away from his lineage because of lack of responsibility over his children. Praise the name of the Lord. That will not be your story in the name of Jesus. Samuel was an anointed one of God. But his children ended up departing from God. They didn't know God. 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 19. This was a man whose word never fell to the ground. He was an anointed prophet. But he left his family to carelessness. To the devil. And then none of his children followed the way of the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 8 and verses 1 to 3. None of his children followed the way of the Lord. They departed from the way of the Lord. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. And the name of his first one was Joel. The second was Abia. They were judges in Bathsheba. And see what they did. His sons walked not in his ways. But turned aside after Lucre. And took bribes and perverted judgment. Train up a child the way you should go now. And when he grows, he will not depart into it. This is when to stalk your children. Stalk your children with the fear of God. Stalk them. You may, not, you may think nothing is happening. No. But those things are seed. They will tell tomorrow. There is no place that there is no pollution. Now the world is full of pollution. The only thing that saves anyone is what is inside. What is inside. When the fear of God is, no matter where they are, they will run away from evil. As a matter of fact, you can't follow your children to everywhere. There is little you can do. They will go to school. They will change school. It will get to a point where they are just there. You, there is nothing you can do. It's just them and God. At such moment, it is what they have inside of them that puts them above all the pollutions of the world. And that's why you must keep loading them with spiritual virtues. You must keep loading them. You must keep sharing with them the things they should know. You must keep teaching them the fear of God. So that when they are face to face with temptation, they will overcome. The psalmist says, the word of God have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Hallelujah. So train up the child. Train up the child. Train up the child the way it should go so that tomorrow it will not depart from it. The greatest investment of parents to children is training them in the way of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. That's the greatest inheritance that you can leave for your children. That's the greatest legacy. In Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 22. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 22. A, a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. To his children's children. You see this inheritance we are talking about here. The Bible is talking about. It's not necessarily, you know, physical things. Okay, now tell me. No matter how good the style of your dress is now. You can't be, that's not the one you'll be keeping for your children's children. When it gets to their turn, it will be rag. It will be outdated. It won't be a style. The dress will look like masquerade clothes. Okay, tell me, which kind of car do you want to keep for your children now? 
when new models are coming out every day. During their time, that will not be what will be in vogue. Thank God for that mansion you have built. Oh, this is mansion. By the time it gets to their generation, it will have gotten outdated. Praise the name of the Lord. That's not the inheritance we are talking about. But the training you give, you give to them is the legacy. That is what they will leave to remember you of. Most of you now, your parents may have gone to be with the Lord many years, but each time you remember them, you give thanks to them, especially those that have impacted unto you godly virtues. That is more than anything. Hallelujah. That's what will make them stand the storms of life. That's what will give them a place. Many times have you not heard God servant Bishop David Oedipo speak concerning his mother? The kind of training that he has had. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at Timothy in the scriptures. Thank God for his mother and his grandmother who brought him in the way of the Lord. So anytime you read about Timothy, what you see in him is his mother. Eunice, his grandmother, Louis, inside of him. Tomorrow, when they see your children, what will they see in them? Will people thank God for your life or shake their head? Will your children tomorrow bless you or curse you? My prayer is that your generations unborn, when they remember you, they will keep blessing you. But this is when to take the responsibility. Training is the corporate responsibility of the man and the woman. Stop running for things that do not last and lose your eternal heritage. All men here and here where it's good to look for provision for your family but not at the expense of their souls. You don't have one time for your children. You can't sit with your children to talk to them. They can't feel your fellowship. They can't feel your father figure because you are just running and running and running away. Most men have Turn the training of children just to the wife, to the mothers. Some have turned it and given some the school teachers the responsibility and go back and insult them. I learned yesterday you shouted on my son. Please, that we are in church does not mean we don't know who we are. If not because I know you, what I will have done, I will not take it easy because that's child abuse. And that is against section 5, subsection C, paragraph A of our constitution. Praise the name of the Lord. Some have turned such responsibility into the hands of housemaid. That's why all manners of spirit are being injected into the children. And tomorrow, they see their children behave one time. They, they are surprised. Hey, you went on my life. When you are running up and down, you didn't know. It's time to wake up. It's a word of wisdom. Those children are for signs and wonders. There is a fight. A fight for those children by the devil. But he has missed it. As the Lord liveth, none of your children shall be victims of the devil. Everyone shall glorify God. Can I hear louder? Amen. Can I hear a louder amen? Can I hear a louder amen? We must therefore take responsibility in giving timely instructions to our children, corrections, and rebook to our children before it becomes late. Train them, teach them everything. Teach them on how to be active spiritually. No matter the price you pay today, I see some wonderful parents. They don't play with their children. Their children active in church. Whatever it will cost them, their children will be in church. Active. Either in the children's church, Sunday school. They are just there among their company. Any spiritual program, they are there. Those things are seed. They are seed. 
their seed. Invest in those children today. Hallelujah. Give them instructions. Admonition is different from instruction. That is time to, to talk to them gently. That is time to give them instruction. That is time to tell them, stop that. You can't go to that place. A child should, a child should not intimidate you by crying. Who didn't cry? Did you not cry when you were small? When he's a child, your child is, you have told him. You bought something for him. According to your level. And he now see another thing in the hand of his friend. That's not your level. He came in and uh, I want that packet of chocolate. You have given him one. That is your size for that one. I want that chocolate. It's okay now. I'll buy for you tomorrow. He cried, cried. Okay, okay, okay. No problem. Um, let's go to shop right. And you now went into your tight that you have packaged to remove it, to satisfy the child. You are already living above your size. You are offending God just to please your child. He won't ask for a packet of chocolate tomorrow. He will ask for one carton. You will now go and borrow again. No, some parents are intimidated by the cry of their child. He's crying and crying and you are shaking, you are shaking. When I was growing, the more you cry, in fact, they will want you to finish all the crying. Right? You will cry. You know that kind of cry? You cry, cry, and sleep on the cry. <laughs> you, and inside your sleep, you are, you are still crying small, small. Then you wake up back with the cry again. When you wake up, eh, eh, okay, I was crying before. Eh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then when you cry and cry, you become hungry. There is no more strength to cry. You now become quiet by yourself and tend to. Then my mother will say, he's hungry now. <laughs> so you'll be a gentle boy and then you see, you'll be praying for them to ask you. The moment they say, so are, are you hungry? Before they finish, you say, yes. <laughs> you, will, you would have forgotten what made you cry. Cry, don't kill. Let them cry today so that they can laugh tomorrow. Praise the name of the Lord. So instruct them. Command them. Rebook them when you should rebook them. Sharply. When you should draw them and embrace them. Embrace them. These are all part of training. Don't spoil your child. Teach them how to manage money. That God has blessed you with that money does not mean you just, you know, throw them anyhow. You make them live above their size today. They can be loyal with money tomorrow. Teach them the value of money. Give them an investment mentality concerning money. Not wasteful mentality. Uh, because my parents have it, so I spend it anyhow. No, it's not like that. It's not like that. When my wife has opportunity to take the children out for shopping and all that, before you leave, they will give you your own money. They will give you your own money. You will make your own budget what you want. So you go. When everybody enters the supermarket, you will be picking the things that your own money can buy. So sometimes when some of them, I'm told because I don't follow them, they only buy and bring my own. They will carry this thing and put it, and put it in the basket. Then by themselves, before they get to the cashier, they will calculate he said, ah, this one don't pass my money. He will remove it and take it back to that one. And do his calculation again. And pay. Praise the name of the Lord. And when you buy your own, you have change. You bring it back. When you get home, the other one, he said, ah, you have change. He said, yeah, that's my own change. Praise. You, you are teaching them how to be responsible. Praise the name of the Lord. Train up your child the way they should go. So that they can give you rest tomorrow. Hallelujah. What you sow into your children today will determine their outcome tomorrow. Genesis 8, 22, while the earth remained, seed time and harvest shall not cease. Cold and heat and summer and winter. So seeds don't die. Every correction you give them today, every instruction, every direction, it will show tomorrow. Hallelujah. 
Galatians 6, 7 to 8. Be not willing, well doing. You will reap if you faint not. You will reap. The reward is coming. Don't be too far. Training. Children requires a lot of patience. Sometimes you will be feeding them with God's word. It will look as if they are not answering. They are not responding as they should. Just keep on. Keep on. Keep on. It's a seed. It's a seed. One day it will break forth. And all those things you have fed them with will begin to germinate and find expression. Don't give up. Don't give up. In case you are passing through any challenge with any of your children right now, I command divine intervention in the name of Jesus. But one thing is important. Parents must be spiritual because we are either carnal or spiritual. And as we know, like beget like. Hallelujah. No one can give what he does not have. Acts chapter 3 and verse 6, such as I have, I give unto you. Such as I have, I give unto you. You want your children to be spiritual? Be spiritual. Will you want your children to serve God? You to serve God. You to serve God. You to serve God. Every morning, your children watch you. Instead of going to covenant of prayer, you sleep. Even to come to church. They will say, Daddy, are we not going to church? Eh, okay, be going. The next door is our home self fellowship. The moment they start home self, you are there. No anything, no anything is touching you. And then the children are watching. They are watching. They now come and, Daddy, they have started home self. Eh, let them start now. Are they disturbing you? Those children are learning all those things. Be spiritual. Be spiritual. Be spiritual. No time to pray with them. No time to share with them. Nothing. Nothing spiritual in the house. No spiritual talks. Nothing. Only kind of things. They see the way you talk at home. Every event that happens in your boat outside, the one you see, you don't see. You come and be talking, jesting, talking, you know, slandering all. They are inside the house. And the children are listening. They go into their room, they laugh and laugh and laugh. They see the way you talk to their mother. Insult. You call her all manners of names. They see the way you talk to their father anyhow. Don't forget tomorrow there will be a wife to somebody. They will be husbands to somebody. If you are not spiritual, don't expect spiritual children. You cannot give what you don't have. Praise the name of the Lord. You cannot give what you don't have. Only spiritually robust parents can sow spiritual seed into the life of their children. That's the only way to secure their generations. Their generation. Be spiritual. Begin to take spiritual things seriously. Be spiritual. Be spiritual. Go around their rooms. Check what they are doing. Make sure they have Bibles. Ask them. They went to church. When they come back, what was the lesson in Sunday school? Check what they wrote. In the house, subject them to spiritual exercise. You, you are taking prayer today. You, tomorrow you take the word. Give schedule of program in your devotion. Exercise them. By so doing, you are impacting them with life. May the Lord give you understanding in the name of Jesus. As the Lord liveth, your children shall be great children. They shall affect their generation positively. You will not weep over any one of them. You will not sorrow over any one of them. In the name of Jesus. Well, today is our encounter with destiny service. And it's good for every believer to know that you have a glorious destiny. Not a struggling destiny. In Romans chapter 8, verses 29 to 30. You have a glorious destiny. He has predestinated you for glory, not for shame. And then before you and I were ever born, our destiny was already determined. We were predestinated. Before we were born, our destiny has been settled. Predestinated. Before we were born, pre. 
the destination has been settled. So you are not supposed to live a life of trial and error. But a certain part of life that guarantees beauty and glory. You have a prosperous destiny. You are not meant to beg. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12. You have a prosperous destiny in God. A prosperous destiny in God. Galatians 3, 13 to 14. A destiny of blessing. The causes have been removed. So no cause of the enemy will walk over your life anymore in the name of Jesus. Maybe in some families there are some evil patterns. Some life there are some evil patterns. You get job, you lose it, you get it, you lose it. You have never gotten a stable job. Anytime some good things come, possibly, they are finished before they remember you. And you hear them say, ah, we forgot. Satan just makes people keep forgetting you when good comes. That's not your portion. Today, it shall be reversed in the name of Jesus. Whatever evil pattern that has been happening in your life is not your portion. Because you have a prosperous destiny, you have an enviable destiny. Genesis 26 and verses 12 to 14. Isaac was great. He went forward, he grew until he became, he became, until he became mighty. So much so that the Philistines envied him. From today, nobody will pity you anymore. You will become a child of envy. In the name of Jesus, you have a royal destiny. Not slavery. A royal destiny. You are predestinated for royalty. Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. He has called us as priests and kings, and we shall reign on the earth. Not a slave. We shall reign on the earth. We shall reign on the earth. Number 5. You have a pay-setting destiny. You have a pay-setting destiny. You are not to be at the back, but at the front. Or that you follow. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 15. He has called us as light. And he said, let your light so shine. You are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. So he has placed you in front for others to follow. Not at the tail. Not at the tail. You are in a commission that is a pay setter. A trailblazer. You can't be backward. From today, I decree every form of stagnation in your destiny broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can I hear a louder? Amen. Amen. You have a destiny of fruitfulness. You can't be burning in any area of life. Physical barrenness is not your portion. Deuteronomy 7, 14. The fruitfulness in every area of life. Psalm 91, verses 11 to 15. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like cedar in Lebanon. Psalm 92, and verses 12 downward. The righteous shall flourish. The righteous shall flourish. The righteous shall flourish. You are meant to be fruitful. Fruitful in your work. Fruitful in the, your, your career. Fruitful in the labor of your work. Your hand. Fruitful in every area. You have a glorious destiny, enviable destiny, royal destiny, fruitful destiny, prosperous destiny. Anything contrary to this is reversed today in the name of Jesus. How do I therefore encounter this great destiny? Number one, be spiritually minded. Be spiritual. Be spiritually minded. Go for spiritual things. Romans 8, 6. Be spiritually minded. Everything that God has for you is packaged in the world. And you can't assess the world if you are not spiritual. Your blessings are assessed through spirituality. Carnality takes people off. Somebody can be in church. But nothing about church can reflect in his life because of carnality. He's in church. All that is marking his wrongs. All that is marking is the people who are not doing it well. You look at Osha, you look at security, and it's nowhere. All that is looking for is fault. He can't hear when God is speaking to him. Any word that is released, he attaches it to somebody else. Somebody has just called with last week. You look at the person in church. I hope you hear how. Carnality. He can't hear anything. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Somebody is even serving. He may even be serving a unit, but carnality is looking for position. He is looking for position so that everybody can see him. When he sees the leader there coming, that's when he's doing like this. He's doing as if he has been walking. So that at least I can be the next leader in that unit. Carnality. Be spiritual. Be spiritually minded. Number two, remain God loving. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the thing that God has for those who love Him. First Corinthians 2 9 to 10. Love God in words, in deed, in action, everything. Number three, be committed to walking in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Be walk in the Spirit. God is always speaking every moment. Walk in the Spirit. Walk, you are a businessman. It's not all trips that is meant for you. There is a trip that you will go to and everything will start coming down in your life. It's not everybody that can be your business partner. That's why you must walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. It's not all open doors that are opened by God. Walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. Some have entered into certain business and they found themselves in a court case. Because it looks sumptuous. But God is not there. It was a trap. Hallelujah. Be committed to a life of prayer and praise. Don't be offended in God. Where you are now may not look like where God has promised, but you are still on your way. It's certainly not your bus stop. Hallelujah. You may not have gotten to where you are going, but certainly you are not where you used to be. Thank him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Live a life of prayer and praise. Live a life of prayer and praise. And then, your destiny will end up in grand style. May the Lord give you understanding in the name of Jesus. Every issue of shame around your life, it shall give way today. In the name of Jesus. I come back in this commission and by the authenticity of God's word, I decree every barrier against that your glorious destiny is hereby destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every hindrance of the devil that has not allowed your testimony to come forth, it is removed now in the name of Jesus. Every manipulations of the devil over your children from this day, no more in the name of Jesus. The satanic control over any of your children is hereby broken in the name of Jesus. Grace for your children to serve God is released now in the name of Jesus. Wherever they have taken your name to, that they have said that your destiny will not have color. This day, I command such short spell and enchantment. Destroy in the name of Jesus. Whatever negative habit that is impeding your glorious destiny, I command a divine intervention for you in the name of Jesus. From this day, your destiny opens up in the name of Jesus. Your career opens up in the name of Jesus. Your family opens up in the name of Jesus. Your business is open up in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that you desire, receive it now in the name of Jesus. No more pain for you anymore. No more downtrodden for you anymore. Nothing goes down in your life anymore. In the name of Jesus. God, we help you this week in the name of Jesus. Every step that you will take this week, favor will answer for you. None shall be stranded this week in the name of Jesus. The God of this commission goes with you. Be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. Then, expect turn around to become your new identity from henceforth. And let everyone say, Amen and Amen.